On this video, let's talk about the role that banks play in the monetary system and how the money creation process works. As we talked in the previous video, the money is an asset that we use for exchanging goods and services. Now, the money supply or the money stock is the quantity of money available in the economy. And we have a mathematical expression to represent money supply. And that is the amount of currency available and out in the public plus deposits. Currency are paper bills and coins in the hands of the public. Demand deposits are balances in bank accounts that depositors can access on demand by writing a check. Now, because there are lots of financial instruments and deposits that we can classify as money, we can separate them according to their liquidity. There are two main categories. M1 are financial instruments that are easily converted into goods and services. M2 is less liquid and is slower money that can be converted into goods and services more slowly, but still assets that have ready purchasing power. This distinction usually doesn't matter in our discussions of the money supply, but has important implications for banking and policy, so keep it in the back of your mind. So as an active learning exercise, what I'd like you to do is follow the link to the Federal Reserve releases. In there, you'll find the measurements for M2 and M1 currently available. I want you to look at the seasonally adjusted series for M1 and calculate the growth of M1 in percentage terms during the first four months of 2020. This has been a very interesting time and there's been a large growth of the money supply over that same period. I want you to go and look at it and calculate the percentage term growth. Surprisingly, money is created in the banking system. So let's talk about the money creation process. Now, money was categorized as currency and deposits. Currency creation is fairly straightforward. The Treasury Department just prints more money. They have mints where they print all the currency we need. Now, the creation of deposits needs a bit more explanation. Now, Khan Academy has already a video, really good video, on how this um, this works. So please look at the video description below this video and watch that video before continuing. Thank you for watching that video. To summarize, deposits equals the monetary base times the money multiplier. The monetary base is currency in circulation and reserves that the banks hold in their accounts at the Federal Reserve. The money multiplier is one divided by the reserve ratio, which is defined as the ratio of reserves to deposits currently in the banking system. Please uh, take your notepad or um, your index cards and write these formulas down. We're gonna use them for exercises in the future. So let's think about the money multiplier. The reserve ratio again was um, the ratio of the amount of reserves that banks are holding at their accounts at the Federal Reserve and the total amount of deposits that they're currently holding. Now, let's look at this table. On the one side, we have the reserve ratio, and on the other hand, we have the money multiplier. As you can see, when we increase the reserve ratio, the money multiplier is decreasing. So, as the reserve ratio increases, the multiplier gets smaller. Now, let's think of scenario here. If banks increase their reserve holdings because of uncertainty or financial crisis, they're not going to be lending to the public. That means that the multiplier is becoming smaller. And if the multiplier is becoming smaller, then the amount of money available in the economy is shrinking. And this is what happens during crises. So to understand this money creation process and how we categorize the amount of money available for the economy, let's think about this active learning exercise. So while cleaning your apartment, you look under the sofa cushion and you find a $50 bill and a half eaten taco. You deposit the bill in your checking account. We know that currently the reserve ratio is 20%. And I want you to think about what the maximum amount of money created could be the result of your deposit, or B, what is the minimum amount that the money supply could increase by your deposit? 
So please take a minute and submit your answers on Top Hat before moving on. So you eat that rest of the taco and you deposit $50 in your checking account. What is the maximum amount that the money supply could increase? Well, like you saw in the Khan Academy video, there is a relationship between banking institutions and individuals. And that relationship is a cycle, the cycle of lending and deposits. Every time you deposit something, you're putting that into a checking account or saving account. The bank uses that capital to lend to somebody else. Now, then that somebody else deposits that money into a financial institution or spends it and then somebody else does. And then whatever bank they deposit that into does more lending and so on and so forth. So the maximum amount that the money supply could increase depends on this lending and deposit cycle. And if it happens indefinitely, we get the maximum numbers according to the money multiplier formula. So let's think about um, our money supply. So the change in the money supply is going to be equal to the change in currency plus the change in deposits. We know that the change in deposits happen, well, that's equal to that, plus the change in the monetary base times the multiplier. So you're depositing $50 into a checking account means that the change in currency is those $50. And the change in the monetary base is your deposit of $50. Now, if it goes indefinitely through the multiplier, to get the maximum, we just multiply that times one divided by, again, our uh, serve ratio was 0 0.2. This is equal to negative 50 plus 250, that equals to $200. And that is the change in the money supply. If this process of lending and deposits and lending and deposits goes on indefinitely. So again, you deposit those $50 in your checking account. What is the minimum amount that the money supply could increase? Let's think back to, to our cycle here. So we have our lending and deposit cycle. Well, what I think about is here, what would be the minimum amount that could be um, created in this process? Well, you deposit your $50 into the bank and the bank keeps it. It doesn't lend it. So if that happens, right, the change in the money supply is gonna be to the change in the currency plus the change in deposits. In this case, the change in the currency was negative 50 and your deposits increased by 50. So money supply changed by zero, so not at all. So in this case, there was no change in the money supply and that's the minimum it could increase if the lending and deposit cycle gets broken right off the bat. For the next active learning exercise, I want you to suppose that the Fed prints $300 of new currency and loads it up in a helicopter. Then they drop it into a heavily populated area. Just like you did before, I want you to think about the maximum and minimum amount of money that will be created. The reserve ratio is the same at 20%. Now this example is not exactly the same as the previous one, so be careful. Please uh, submit your answers on top hat.